Hello everybody and welcome to Tournament Tactician, my name is Boulevard, and normally we'd go through the tournament tier list, but, you know, it feels disingenuous to actually tier things when we don't have any tournament data to base it off of, so rather than mislead you, I'm going to really just focus on the new decks that I think, uh, you know, and, and tell you where I feel like they fall relative power-wise. Uh, for the most part, a lot of the existing decks are going to be tiered relatively the same. A lot of them haven't really gotten any new tools. Surprisingly, I think Shen Fiora has gotten the most new stuff, but there's some problems with even the new stuff that they got, and that, like, Cataclysm is bugged because you can just unchallenge the unit if you're the defending player, so that one's going to take a little while. I do think that Aegis is a good card for them, but I, I don't really want to talk about this this week. I want to talk about the new stuff and what I think we're going to see this weekend. These are sort of the four decks that I had heard of on Ladder, and I was like, hey, you know, these sound like they might be kind of viable. I didn't have TLC specifically. I just, I, I some kind of Lissandra deck I figured was going to be up there, but these are the ones that were played in Giant Slayer Fight Night, be it EU or North America, so these are the ones that we have sample lists to look at from players who have already had the confidence to bring these into a tournament, so these are the four decks we're going to focus on. So first off, we have a returning favorite in trundle Ladros combo, sometimes called TLLC, uh, trundle Ladros lissandra combo, and it's effectively TLC with Lissandra in it. Now, there are three different versions of this that I've been able to identify across the uh, EU and NA fight nights. There is the Dark Lord Inquisitor version, the Revitalizing Roar version, and the Turbo Watcher version. Um, so I'm going to jump into each of these deck lists and kind of go over the differences, because for the most part, the shells are the same across the board. Now, the Dark Lord Inquisitor version obviously runs Dark Lord Inquisitor, and this is probably my favorite card from the new set, so I am a little bit biased towards this, but I'm not even sure if I'm convinced that this is the best version. Essentially, what you're doing is you're playing a control... You're, you're just a Shadow Isle for your control deck. Like, you got some cool new board wipes in Ice Shard and Bladed Ravine, and of course Three Sisters is popping up in nearly every deck, but at the end of the day, you really look pretty similar to the Trundle Ladros combo decks that we saw when uh, Revitalizing Aurora first came out in Targon, so, you know, that's kind of why it, you know, just picks up the mantle of TLC. You can really run any Freljord Shadow Isle control package that you want. I think players are just still kind of trying to figure out, you know, what's the appropriate amount of freeze, and do I really need Avalanche if I've got the Bladed Ravine, and, you know, all this kind of stuff, how much ramp is appropriate. So that one's kind of up in the air. I don't have enough meta on the data one way or the other to really lead you in any given direction, but understand that the decks that seem really popular right now, we still have a Felios Bilgewater, we still have Twisted Fade Fizz, Trundle Ladros combo seems to be the most prominent new deck, uh, at, at least, like, Lissandra-wise. Uh, TLC seems to be the one that we're gonna I mean like it's not a Sharima deck but it's like the new deck and, and it slots into pretty much any lineup you know there were no Freljord Shadow Isle decks that were popping up anywhere <laughs> RIP and Nivian Field of Rush because they just you know they weren't there during the seasonal just really having a bad beat coming out of the previous meta that we were in uh, overall, you know, you're just looking at Dark Lord Inquisitor, maybe you win the mirror by overwhelming them with, you know, the 8-8s overwhelms, the Frozen Thralls, so I'm not convinced that that's the most effective way to win the mirror, but you can spike in the mid-game, which is something that the other lists don't really do as well, and all it really takes is, like, that one two-turn window where you've got one or maybe even two Frozen Thralls out, and you're just beating down your opponent, you throw an Atrocity at him, you're chilling, you, like, get to that Ladros finisher. You're not as concerned with the Watcher coming down, I don't think. Of course, you can still get it off because, you know, the is gonna be summoning the Thrall, is going to be able to do that, and of course, Trundle Pillars. You can very much still summon the Watcher, but it feels more like a Plan B, whereas Plan A is just overwhelm them with these these eight eights. Then we have the Revitalizing Roar version. You'll notice that the spell lineup is relatively the same as I had mentioned. Players really just giving a little bit of expression in terms of which Shadow Isle for red spells that they want to run. And then of course we have Revitalizing Roar. The main combo being you play Alessandra, you level her, you get the Watcher, you Revitalizing Roar the Watcher. Now I'm not sure which one actually wins the mirror, um, be it the Revitalizing Roar or the Dark. Thor, the Dark Lorne version, just because it's really hard to tell if that window is big enough for the Dark Lorne cards to get in there instead of the Revitalizing Roar, and it's possible that you still just organically get the Watcher down to zero mana in either list, but I think that the Revitalizing Roar version should have the advantage in the mirror, the though the Dark Lorne Inquisitor version was more popular, so these are the two main versions we're looking at going into the weekend. And then this last list that I've dubbed Turbo Watcher on the tier list yet to be placed uh, is what Ian Nagara is running in tonight's NA Fight Night. Uh, he's got Fading Memories, he's got Spectral Matron. I know that when the Watcher was spoiled, a lot of people looked to Spectral Matron and were like, hey, you know, this looks like the best way to get it out. He's still got the Revitalizing Roar in there. And I am really curious to see how this actually pairs up. Uh, I am shooting this during the tournament, so I'm not sure how it is going. Um, but I would definitely look to tonight's North America Fight Night and see how Ian Nagara plays to sort of judge the relative power level of this deck 
because this is a deck that was pretty popular in NA. I think there were three people, maybe even four, that brought it. Um, so, you know, he is running into the mirror match, probably, and I, I think that's what he's looking for here is, you know, be a little bit worse in the aggro matchups. You know, we even see him go down to two Ice Shard and just hard beat the mirror by Spectral Matroning, just watchering before they can watcher me back, and that's all it takes, so... I think that's what Ian's going for here. Once again, look to NA Fight Night to figure out how that actually worked out for him. Then we had Timeless Ladros. This is, of course, basically Karina Control, where you are trying to concurrent timelines your Ladros into a Dreadway in order to win the game in one shot. Uh, it's probably one of the best Kindred decks out there, and I think that Kindred does a lot of the heavy lifting in this list. Now, there are two lists that I saw for this, one in NA and one in EU. The one in EU got second place. Again, don't know how the one in NA did. This is obviously the NA one, as apparent by the fact that there's a giant NA right there. Um, but this is the list that's running Karina Varaza. Not as big a fan of this list, personally. It really feels like the concurrent timelines is just in there for the Ladros, and you kind of cut down on your follower and unit count as you tend to do when you're running Karina Varaza. And overall, I've just never really been a big fan of Karina her Herself. I'm a big fan of these Shadow Isle Piltover and Zon style control decks, but Karina herself just doesn't do it for me. Um, and then, of course, we got a lot more removal. So let's take a look at the EU version. This one, taking a little bit more advantage of the concurrent timelines with things like Spirit Leech and Bladed Caretaker, um, Chump Wump, you know, not the best concurrent timelines target, but you are still going to get those fodders for the rummage. And I do like rummage a lot in this list because it allows you to dump those excess copies of concurrent timelines, whereas uh, something like this Karina version is just kind of going to be stuck on them. And in a deck that is so limited on draw power already, you know, we're only running one glimpse beyond. We don't really have any. Even our one for ones aren't like super effective. I, I just just don't think that this is the kind of deck that can afford to have dead draws. Um, so I, I am a much bigger fan of the EU version of this list, at least from this most recent fight night. Um, and then again, you know, just kind of pick and choose your spat on your Shadow Isle and PNZ control spells. No one's really running Get Excited uh, because you are trying to one shot them with Ladros. You don't need to lean on that win condition of, hey, you know, I got an early Elise and I got you down to 10 HP and then I'm going to blast you in the face with all these PNZ spells in the late game, though. Not sure how this version does into something like Twisted Fate Fizz. Is, you know, we're not really as control heavy in the spell lineup, but I'm pretty confident that you'll be able to make it to turn 9 at least and then you can go for your Ladros combo. And TF Fizz isn't a deck that has really any interaction for that. It's going to take way too many resources for them to kill the Dreadway it'd have to be like double get excited mystic shot and it's just not a realistic option that costs them five cards and while that's not a lot for tf is um hopefully you know in their case they, they're gonna name that at your face this late in the game and you know I, I just i'm really curious to see how this one shapes up for the weekend but this like this and lissandra seem like they're going to be the two decks of the weekend of the new set and it kind of sucks that they're not shirima but it is what it is the one aggro deck that I've heard enough about to, like, be confident that it's going to come out this weekend is Lucian Azir. I know that there's, like, Renekton, Sejuani, Overwhelm. I'm really not feeling like that's going to be a mainstay. I, I definitely think that that's more of a flash in the pan week one kind of thing, but Azir Lucian does feel like it has some legs, which is a little bit weird to say because Lucian decks tend to look really good on release and then not have legs. I mean, Lucian Hecarim fell off pretty spectacularly after its initial uh, sort of playability after the release of Grand Plaza, and, you know, part of that is the Plaza nerf, but Lucian decks are so hard to judge because they do look really powerful and they're really high rolly in nature, but the high roll always feels good when you hit it, and this one is even a little bit more mid-range focused. We see a lot of four drops in the deck, so, you know, maybe this is the time that Lucian actually gets to come out and stick around, but we'll see. It definitely feels like one of the better aggro decks, at least of what I've seen, but, um, you know, there's a lot going on here. I'm not going to get too deep into it because it is, you know, once again, just kind of a straightforward three relentless pursuit. We've got some counter spells and right of negation. It's an aggro deck, but the EU version actually looked really different as well. Um, really consolidated on the follower lineup. We're getting a couple of, like, predict. The predict landmark is in there, but, like, it's also a 2-2, two -two, so you're not going to hate that, and in a deck like this, sculpting for that perfect relentless pursuit can be a really big difference maker, or a single combat if there's, like, a Twisted Fate that's about to level that you need to get rid of. I think those are kind of the two main targets that you're going to be looking for, but being able to fill out your curve in an aggro deck like this for a relatively cheap option like the um, Preparations does, I think is really cool. And then Emperor's Dias is obviously going to feel the Lucian. This list does feel a little bit more high rolly just based on the fact that you're not really running as many of those mid-game units that are going to be able to stick you around and follow you into the late game like old-school Demacio used to do, but you've got that high roll potential in the Emperor's Dias, and this really opens you up for Shaped Stone. I think this is probably the appealing card that sells you on the Landmark version if you've been playing with this deck and you're like, Shaped Stone is just absolutely insane, or even if you're just afraid of, like, Culling Strike because you think that people are like, oh man, Culling Strike kills Lissandra, and it kills, uh, you know, Azir and Aphelios and Twisted Fate, so... 
then you could I, I could also see an argument for just you know leaning towards the landmark version so that you get the shaped stone in there to play around cards like that but at the moment i'm not seeing any noxus decks that are like hard and pressing uh but yeah you know out of these two lists i'm a little bit more of a fan of the na version uh just having this more mid-range style of deck where you get to curve out relatively nicely uh that said i'm not really a fan of like sand crafter as a card so it is a little bit awkward i i feel like maybe there are better things that you could be running in these slots but you know, maybe the more I think about it, the more I'm leaning on the EU version. I'm not an aggro player. You guys know that. You've been watching my content. I don't care if you've been watching my content for a week. You know I'm not an aggro player. That's very obvious by the fact that I won't shut up about it. And then the last list that we have, thankfully, is another Shurima deck, but as you can see, Shadow Isle is kind of the region of the new set, um, so it'll be curious to see if that flip-flops as more things come out, but for the most part, this is kind of Endure Spiders with Nasus instead of Endure, and then Kindred again doing a lot of heavy lifting in the deck because you are already playing that self-sacrifice style of gameplay. Kindred's just going to get you a lot of advantage for that, and I do like having a much more mid-range kind of lineup in a deck like Endure when, when at least Kalista versus Callista Sejuani was really the argument of Endor, and this is metas ago that I'm talking. I was always a really big fan of the Sejuani version, personally, because, you know, you had the Neverglade Collector that would allow you to off-turn Sejuani and level it really quickly, and I just always found that the mid-range option was more, the more expensive champion option was more appealing to me, so I, it is nice to see that, like, we've cut out Callista, who felt good but not great she definitely felt like we were always kind of looking for something better and you know maybe we found it now with the kindred nasus um it, basically you are just playing they who endure that doesn't get quite as big it's a little bit harder to get it that big um but you have right of negation and that's good enough it, it gives you protection for your atrocity nasus has spell shield organically or i think once you level him leveled nasus right i don't even have to get to level three yeah so leveled nasus uh has the spell shield although i think that if you are striking with Nasus, I ideally it's gonna it's gonna be ending the game or at least you'll be able to atrocity it but because he doesn't have overwhelm he only has fearsome you know it is very possible that your Nasus is gonna have to get thrown into a blocker level up get that spell shield and just try to throw away your first Nasus for the sake of all future Nasus so that you can more safely spell shield atrocity uh but this deck is really cool to me I was a big fan of indoors so I am excited to see how this works out um it was only run by one player across fight night and uh, you know Kindred, is this the best Kindred deck? I don't know about that one, Chief. I, I know that there's a lot of talk about the concurrent timelines, Ladros, which I think you really need the Kindred for. So this is not, like, week one is not the time to be making considerations on your champion lineup. You need to pick a Kindred deck and play it. Don't try to, like, scuff your Nasus champion lineup so that you can play concurrent timelines, Ladros. But I, I don't expect this one to see too much play. This might be something that gets, like, more refined later on, or if we can find a spot where, like, Indoor is just really good. You could even just, like, run this and then also run Indoor and still run, like, the Mono Callista, you know, style version. And we're getting really close to having three Indoor decks in your lineup, which I'm sure somebody out there is excited for, but it's not really me. And that's really all that stood out to me in terms of day one decks. Now, I'm sure that there are more out there, and I'm sure more will come up this weekend, but those are the ones that I had heard enough about. I, I had looked into a little bit more and were like, yeah, these feel like things that can really stand out and make a big impact week one of the tournament meta. Um, there are some other cool concepts out there. They probably need a little bit more refining. I'm really not expecting to see, like, any LeBlanc this weekend, any Sivir. Mono Shirima feels totally off the table. And then, yeah, it looks like a little bit of a cop-out on the tier list where I've got them in, like, a 2B placed tier, but, like, I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, this is tier 3, just for the sake of making a prediction that could be right or wrong about, because, like, I don't even care if I'm right about that. I I'm more curious in actually getting data on it this weekend, which we can do in the online league series, which I'll be casting tomorrow with Shit Just Works. Unfortunately, limited to North America only because there is a bug that has disabled cross shard play, and we don't have the time or manpower to run both a European and a North American tournament. So you don't have to be North American to play, but you do have to have a North American account. You know, we're still going to prize out if you're in EU or Asia or anywhere else. Um, so yeah, that is going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more Shreema content. Might even start to put out some midweek videos. Who knows? Uh, whenever the fancy strikes me. But thank you all for watching. My name is Boulevard, and as always, good luck in your tournaments.